Blog Talk Radio. I can assure you I'm very aware of what the scriptures say. Uh, I may not always know the address of where the scriptures are found, uh, but I pray God have uh, plenty of very uh, uh, God-fearing men around me who are well steeped in the Word, and what a joy it is to learn from them and to walk with men of like mind. So uh, the Roman Catholic Church um, is the mother of harlots spoken of in Revelation, and uh, all of her doctrines of demons are not found in the Scripture, that they are are easily exposed, and so what happens is uh, the Roman Catholics have to equivocate, otherwise dance around, and make up new concepts to cram into Scripture. Uh, using words like uh, congruent faith and, or congruent merit and, and condign merit uh, versus strict merit and all of this, uh, that we don't see the Lord Jesus making these kinds of definitions. And just tonight, when Mr. Hoffman brought up uh, Paul and truth law, uh, do we uh, that the, uh, the, 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 the the sufferings of Christ? He is he is feeling the what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. Well, Mr. Hoffman wants to use this verse to try to say that there is something you need to add to the suffering, uh, the atonement of Christ Jesus on the cross, which is just silly because the rest of Colossians, that verse is in Colossians 1.20, the rest of the book of Colossians, uh, Paul is hammering home the complete sufficiency of Christ on the cross, not to mention... Uh, so many places elsewhere where Paul uh, emphatically states the sufficiency of Christ on the cross. The number of obvious and silly errors in Mr. Peterman's diatribe are almost too numerous to demonstrate. Nevertheless, let us go about doing so. First mistake. The verses to which Mr. Peterman refers is not Colossians 1.20, it is Colossians 1.22-25. And to his great dismay, they say exactly what he claims they do not. He has now reconciled in his fleshly body through his death, presents you holy, without blemish, and irreproachable before him, provided that you persevere in the faith, firmly grounded, stable, and not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you have heard which has been preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, am a minister. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church, of which I am a minister in accordance with God's stewardship, given to me to bring to completion for you the word of God. This is how... Mr. Peterman can make the laughable claim that all the teachings of the Catholic Church are absent from Scripture. The fact is that all of the teachings of the Catholic Church are present in Scripture, but not to an insolent child who just plugs his ears and says, it's not, it's not, it's not. Mr. Peterman gave no alternative exegesis of Paul's words, because he can't. Paul says what he says, and there is no escaping it. Dan is left to do exactly that which he falsely accuses us of doing, dancing, equivocating, and cramming into Scripture that which is not there. In doing so, Dan is ensnared in his own heretical web. For in his insisting that Paul hammers home the complete sufficiency of Christ's atonement, that is both material and practical sufficiency, Dan doesn't merely flat out call the Apostle Paul a liar. He also does the same of his God, John Calvin, who taught limited atonement. Well, Dan assures us that he knows the Bible clearly. He asserts that Jesus' atonement is both complete and limited, thus making himself look like the confused, clueless heretic he is. The truth is that Christ's atonement is perfect in its material sufficiency, unlimited in its reach, but lacking in the practical sense for those who do not accept it, cooperate with it, and persevere. Dan is too blinded by hate and hypocrisy to see this. That is why he is so angry and frustrated. He cannot debate us on the merits on any doctrine. He will always lose. Dan is just as wrong in his assertion that the Catholic Church is the mother of harlots spoken of in the book of Revelation. That is not an opinion. 
it is a demonstrable fact. When deciphering the implicit and explicit clues given, it is clear that St. John is talking about the city of Jerusalem of the first century. Not mind you is Jerusalem chosen as the most likely from a list of candidates. It is the only candidate. We will prove that tonight. 